Hi guys, welcome to Think Tank with Will. Uh, we don't have Scott here today. Scott's, uh, he's a bit busy this weekend, unfortunately. We're going to try to catch up uh, very soon so that we can deliver the the podcast um, in relation to fate uh, and time. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about free will. And we're going to touch on the subject of how you can, you know, uh, control your future uh, to the degree that you can. Uh, Scott and I are going to talk about that, um, but for the most part, I want to send out a little podcast to you guys. I, I'm going to talk a little bit about death uh, this morning. Uh, I'm going to be talking a little bit about how death hurts us, but then I also want to talk about how death, uh, it's not something necessarily bad. Uh, it's, it can help us. You know, It really can be a good thing when you think about it in the right perspective, You know, and that's that's half of what all this philosophy talk is about. It's about changing your perspective on on things so that y- you can get a better understanding about how it works in your life and all that sort of stuff. So anyway, look, um, I'm going to jump straight into it because I don't, uh, I don't think I'm going to be getting too much off topic. <laughs> but um, so death, how does death hurt us as human beings? You know, well, um. Before we can examine that, first let's examine what death is without human beings. Um, I've referenced Mark Rowlands before in his books, um, but he has a really good um, uh, reference in his book, The Philosopher and the Wolf. He speaks about the death of his beloved friend, Brennan. Uh, Brennan is a, uh, he, he's a wolf that, uh, that Mark lived with for the majority of his life. And he speaks about after his death, um, his brothers and sisters, uh, the pack, uh, they they saw the death, but they didn't associate with it the same way that we do. You know, uh, sort of like the raven uh, in Edgar Allan Poe, you know, nevermore sort of thing. Uh, whenever we see death, we the ego comes into play. What I've lost, what I can't ever see again. What I appreciate is no longer. However, wolves and dogs and cats, admittedly, we don't understand whether this is completely true or not, but for the most part, they don't have an ego. And so, the aspect of what I no longer have is no longer there. And so, um, Death becomes very, uh, it comes back to the rawness of what death is. And death is just a nevermore. It's, it's no longer there. You know, once it was there, and now it no longer is. And um, so, why do animals lose less when they die than humans do? And for the most part, this is explained as, again, as Mark Rowland says, uh, because human beings are beings towards a future. And, uh, and I'm going to interject here. Uh, someone told, I can already feel myself doing it, but somebody told me recently, whenever I speak in these podcasts, I sound very matter of factly and <laughs> perhaps I do. Uh, and so I apologize if I do come across that way. It's just the way that I hold my tone of voice. I'm going to try to stop that for you guys. But, um, but yeah, being, being a being towards the future, being a being towards the future means that you've invested from the present moment into future moments. Yeah, and uh, well, f- let me put it to you like this: you know, um, if if I had a dog or a wolf or whatever, and I took it for a run, and I run it down this long path, let's just say it's three k's, something like that, and then we stop at a beach, and we'll walk along the beach for five minutes, and then we'll start heading back along the. Along the run back, there's a little restaurant. I'll stop and I'll order something and I'll share that with my dog or wolf or whatever. My my companion of choice. (laughs) Now, um, if if I did that every single day consistently, 7 a.m. every single day, ordered the same thing, walked the same path, this dog would love it. It would be routine. It would be appreciated for what it is because that's that's how dogs are you know and if you've ever owned a dog you'd know what i'm talking about 
However, if I took you as a person, you and I went out for that same run and we walked along the beach, but, you know, instead of sharing the meal, I got you one as well. <laughs> um, but it was the exact same meal every single day for a year. Eventually, you're going to get sick of those runs. Eventually, you're going to get sick of that walk along the same beach. Eventually, you're going to get sick of that that cream brulee or whatever, you know? Um, and this, this comes back to what we're talking about, being towards the future. Because in the present moment, a dog is like, hey, yeah, I'm running along this beach and I did this yesterday, but man, this is awesome. You know, but whenever we do it, the present moment is always a little bit tainted by the the memory of what's already occurred and the expectation of future memories. And that's what a being towards the future essentially is. You know, we invest from the present moment into future moments. We work hard today so that in the future we can enjoy life. Whereas a dog enjoys life in the present moment. And tomorrow's just another day, you know. And a lot of what Eckhart Tolle uh, writes about seems to be enjoy the present moment, appreciate the present moment for what it is unto itself, and your life will be happier. It'll be simpler, you know. A lot of the pain and confusion that occurs in the world is because people are so invested outside of the present moment, or they allow the past to, to come up and cause them grief or, you know, or they're, they're looking for something in the future that they don't presently have and that's upsetting to them, you know. Um, that sort of thing, I suppose you could say, you know, um, the ego or even pain bodies have a slight grip over your reality of time because um, they keep bringing back the path and keep pushing towards the future, you know? And uh, when we invest so much into the future, and then, like, if I invest all this money, all this time, all this this energy, you know, I'm, I'm putting all my focus and my mental energy and, and spiritual energy into next week, I'm going to do this or do that or whatever. And I get hit by a car. Well, my being, my, my plans or actions or towards my energy towards the future has been cut off. And that's why we humans seem to view death as so, so bad. Because it cuts off what chances you have of being what you were planning. You know, being towards the future. And dogs don't invest into the future. If they want something, they just do it. Yeah, and I think, look, let's be honest. As human beings, that's not a really good way to live. You know, people who live in the present moment often end up making horrible life choices and getting themselves in a really bad spot. You don't want to do that. But what you can do is you can take a step back and allow that awareness to sink in and just start appreciating the present moment for, for what it is while it's there. Because you may not get that opportunity later on, you know? And this doesn't mean don't invest into the future. This just means just just look at where you are, when you are. Because, look, the present moment, I like to think of it as like a... Time is like a film strip that's running through the present moment. The present moment isn't a part of time, you know? The present moment's always going to be changing and interlooping as that film strip keeps spinning through it, you know? So, if you, if you don't take a little bit of time to appreciate it now and then, you're going to miss a lot of, of pictures, you know? But enough about that. Let's, let's, I think it's time to move on to death itself, you know? Obviously, uh, we can deduct that death is a bad thing because as a being towards the future, you, use your, you lose your plans and you lose what you've invested into, and, well, you know, but, you know, your being also ends as well, you know, and uh, if you're familiar with the works of Epicurus, he was an ancient Greek philosopher, uh, I think he, around 305 or something like that, 
uh, he spoke a lot about death. He's like the, the lead philosopher of death. His works are pretty good. Even if you, if you only get the opportunity to Google him, just have a little Google, have a read about what he talks about. But virtually, his, his, he puts it like this. You know, um, your life is like a field of vision. And um, look out your window right now. You know, you have a field of vision. And that may be for miles and miles. But eventually, you're going to come to a point where you can't quite see past that tree. You can't quite see past that hill. You can't quite see what's just outside. And that's your field of vision. And death is that line. You know, when you die, or your, if your life is a field of vision, death is not inside that field of vision because you're alive, not dead, you know? And so that field of vision is death itself. It lays outside of your field of vision. Death is not something that occurs whilst you're alive. Death is not something that can harm you as a field of vision, as, as, as a living thing. Because when we're alive, when we are alive, death is not. And when we are dead, we are not alive to experience it. And that's, uh, that's a comforting way to think of things. You know, in my last video, I spoke about how I, um, I had to endure the death of my dear friend. And that helped me through it a lot. Because sometimes when you sit around thinking, oh no, what did they experience? What was the pain they were going through? Sometimes knowing that they weren't around to experience their own death is comforting. Because, you know, we, we've, we view death as a bad, horrible thing. And sometimes it is. You know, a, babies die, infants die, and, and people who don't deserve it die. But um, unfortunately, that's just the way the world works, you know, and and yeah, death isn't always a glorified, beautiful thing, you know, but it's important. You know, we, look, we all know how death is, is harmful to us, you know, it cuts off our plans for the most part. Well, honestly, that's, that's one of the biggest things. But now I'm going to start talking a little bit more about how death is helpful, you know. Let me take you back to that field of vision. You know, when, when you look at that field, you look left. And you can see you know, a tall building in the distance and nothing really quite past that. And you look right, you see this big, beautiful mountain. And, you know, it's got snow on its peak and all that sort of stuff. You look, you look straight ahead and, uh, you know, you, you see these, these treetops and, and you can see birds uh, scattering through the sky. And you look behind you and you see this just flat ocean, you know, and, and, and just on the edge of that ocean is the sun setting or rising, whatever you want to do, you know, paint yourself the picture. And you've got your field of vision all around you, you know, you, you see just what you can see and you're like, you know, I'm in the center of my field of vision. And it, it puts things into perspective. You know, I, if I need to get over there, I need to walk from here to there and then a little bit past that tree. Or you see that dog urinating on that fire hydrant, I need to walk twice the distance of there to get over there, you know? When you have the center or the perspective of where you are, um, being able to get to where you want to go is easier. And I'm, and I'm not being metaphorical here. I'm being quite literal, you know? If there's something that you, you want to go in life or something that you want to do, knowing where you are is, is, is really important. You know, have you ever sat down and thought about what you want to do? I was talking to somebody at TAFE the other day about this. Oh, I don't know. I, I doubt they're listening. <laughs> I hope they are. But um, I hope, I hope everybody listens to these. You know? But um, maybe that's just my ego talking. <laughs> but uh, I was talking to her about this. And I said, what do you want to do in life? And I ask a lot of people that, you know, because well, I used to work in insurance. And I had uh, somebody ask me that. And I've just never been asked that before, you know. And um, yes, I'm getting off topic. I know. Just, just let me say it. <laughs> yeah, but I'd never been asked that before. And I sat there and I'm like, I can't believe somebody's asking me what I actually want to do. And I'm like, well, uh, I don't know. He's like, no, 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 seriously. What do you want to do? Like experience, money, nothing matters. You have everything that you need to become anything that you want. Everything is within your grasp. What do you want to do? And um, I thought about it. And, you know, I started taking steps in the direction of what I wanted to do. And what he said was, um, 
well, if that's really what you want to do, why don't you just go ahead and, and give it a go? Because obviously you're sitting here doing something you don't like. So why don't you just try? I mean, if you fail, you're going to end up straight back where you what you with what you were doing already, which is not common for what you really truly want. And if you get it, you succeeded, man. Fuck yeah, you know. And yeah, look, if I didn't think about it like that, I wouldn't have uh, had the direction that I wanted to go in. You know, um, I wouldn't have been like, well, that's where I want to be. And but this is where I am now. And a lot of people never do that sort of thing. So do start doing that sort of shit. <laughs> you know but anyway you know that's what I'm talking about with the whole field of vision thing um, if you know where you are and you know where you want to go metaphorically have a look around you know but um, but if there was no limit to that field of vision if you looked left and you looked right and you looked forward and back and you just saw everything you know, let's just pretend the earth is flat and you can see Everything. There is no limit to your field of vision, and I know this is really hard to to, to imagine, because you know, eventually you're going to stop seeing. It. But you see, you can't even imagine it, can you? I can't. Just, just try. Everywhere you look, you can see everything. There's no limit on your field of vision. Everything becomes slightly insignificant. Yeah, everything's just continual. Everything's just there, and you're just in in the midst of everything. Yeah, and you can take that any way that you want to. Perhaps that's a lesson on life, but um, well, that's 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 up for you guys to decide, really. But um, death puts things into perspective. You know, um, I once uh, I used to talk about this a lot, and what I used to say was perhaps I'm wrong. A lot of the shit that I say could be wrong. You know, but this is just what I've experienced, and that's what I'm just imparting onto you guys. But um, but yeah, death puts things into perspective because if if I was immortal, a mortal, um, and I went and I saw the pyramids, and I went and I scuba dived with the whales, and I skydived on the back of a giant eagle, whatever, you know, I did amazing things. Um, it doesn't seem to matter that much, does it? Because, you know, you've got all the time in the world. Literally, you don't die. You just keep going. You know, fountain of youth sort of shit. And death gives things value. Because if you only have something for a short time, you start appreciating it for what it is. You know? How often do you go outside and just, like, fall to the floor and, and pick up a handful of dirt and go, man, this dirt is fucking amazing. That dirt's always going to be there. You know? Um, I challenge you to walk outside and take a deep breath of, of air and just appreciate everything for what it is the second that it's there. You know, um, Epicurus once said that, oh, no, 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 sorry, it wasn't Epicurus. I can't remember who it is, but you never walk into the same river twice. And that's because, you know, the, the water that was rushing against your feet a moment ago is now a out into the ocean you never walk into the same river twice and you never walk on the same dirt twice you never walk you never breathe the same air twice you know that's because everything comes to an end and this too shall end that's a really beautiful phrase right there you know i i'm not too sure who said that i believe it may have been osho i've been corrected with my pronunciation of osho so i'd like to apologize about that but um I think it may be Osho. A friend of mine quoted it to me and explained it to me, and uh, I'd have to dig deeper just to make sure. But yeah, I believe it's Osho. This too shall end. Everything's going to come to an end. The happiness that you're feeling right now, this too shall end. The sadness that you're going to feel, and this too shall end. What you're breathing, your life, everything that you feel or experience within your life, this too shall end. Eventually, that field of vision is going to close in on you, you know? But that's okay. It doesn't matter. Because that field of vision is what brings beauty to everything inside it. You know, you, you can move back and forth and change the field of vision as much you, as you want. You know, you can shorten it by doing things or you can extend it by doing things. You know, you, you can start smoking or you can take a jogging in the morning. But it's going to give value to everything inside it. Uh, it 
if I uh, took all those beautiful things that I did, um, parasailing off eagles and shit, and I and I did that today, right here, right now, and everybody saw it, they were like, man, Roy, Will, you are amazing. You did all these great things. But, you know, the second that you take away, this too shall end. It stops being so beautiful, doesn't it? You know, and um, yeah, well, death is painful for us. And if we ever found a way to completely detach from the ego, I, I imagine that we would view death very differently. But I don't know, because I don't think that day will ever happen. You know, where, where, that's just what human beings are. Now, even the Zen master, who's upside down on the waterfall, uh, even he has an ego. No, yeah. uh, we spoke. Scott and I spoke about this earlier, you know. But um, but yeah, you know, death doesn't have to be a bad thing. Change your perspective of it. You know, that's that's the whole reason that I talk in these in these little podcasts. You know, I'm hoping to change your perspective so that you can become empowered, so that you can touch on that little piece of enlightenment. You know, so I challenge you to walk outside. And when, whenever you appreciate something for what it is, that's true value. You know, uh, again, you know, looking at our past videos, I spoke about this. We spoke about this. Um, whenever you value something for what it can give you, it's instrumental because it can get you something. You know, it's instrumentally valuable. Whenever you appreciate something for just just for being it and no other reason. Uh, that's true value. That's true value that comes from the heart and the soul. That's beautiful, you know. So I challenge you to go outside, and some of you may get this really easily. Some of you may be a little bit more difficult. Take a deeper, fresh air and appreciate that for what it is. Don't appreciate the air for for whatever it does to you, because that breath that you just breathed into your body will never be there again. That same breath, those same air particles, that same speck of dust and hair or whatever will never be there again. You'll breathe it out and it'll rise in the atmosphere and cycle through and do whatever, you know? So appreciate it for what it is. Now, um, just appreciate everything for what it is when you can, you know? I, it's not that easy. Just remember to, to bring yourself back into the present moment, you know. And well, yeah, well, I think I've said everything I need to say. I, mean, I wanted to keep this one really short, and really brief. Uh, I know Scott's not here. Uh, I would have really, I really like talking to Scott, you know. I like the back and forth that we do, but for, but I didn't want to leave you guys waiting a week, so I just uploaded something little. Um, next week, Scott and I are going to talk about, um, you know, uh, the relationship between fate and time, free will, all that sort of stuff. Um, any other requests, uh, just send me a message. Um, doesn't have to be anything spectacular. Uh, if there's something nagging at you at the back of your mind that you want to hear something about or something that you're just plainly interested in for no particular reason, just let us know. Uh, and done. Signing off. Uh, this is Will from Think Tank, and I uh, hope you guys have a good one. All right. Catch you guys later.